man who calls himself a feminist. Well, I mean the capital F kind. The kind who tweets about it and wears t-shirts and interrupts with force. But if you do fall for a man who uh, calls himself a feminist, <laughs> don't drive seven hours to the fundraising gala for the rape crisis center where he works. Especially if you're in an ambiguous open relationship and his, his paramour, the young student from Hampshire who wears dark eyeliner and feathers in her hair and proust in her hand drops the two of you off at the curb while he adjusts his tie. It will be a black tie affair. You all look so good. But if you go anyway, because your heart is your heart, so you followed it because books and posters told you to. And when he asks you to come give a talk, one of your well-prepared I'm a strong woman talks at the fundraising gala for the Rape Crisis Center, as a part of your commitment to women, or perhaps his commitment to women. Don't wear your favorite red dress that swishes like a curtain around your legs. Don't wrap your arms around him like your body is infinite. It isn't. Don't go to the open bar. <laughs> yes, there will be an open bar at the right ball. <laughs> yes, you can laugh at this joke. You, of all people, should be allowed to laugh at this joke. Because this is weird, isn't it? Everyone all dressed up, bartender, old school kind, sliding a small glass of Dewar's into your palm. And then another. A glass of liquor sliding down a bar has such a, a solid sound, doesn't it? Like a, like a cue ball on a pool table. Anyway, if you must go to the rape ball, if you must wear your lush red dress, if you must visit the bar several times before the microphone squeals and everyone sits around their candlelit tables. Don't rest your hand on his knee beneath the tablecloth while they serve salmon and asparagus. Don't rest your head on his shoulder. Don't whisper anything into his ear. Thank you for having me.